depending on where the planets are, can that affect us physically? Like the Mercury in retrograde, um, is that a real thing for you? Do you believe in that? Um, the good thing about science is when it's true, it's not a matter of whether you believe in it. It would be true for everyone at all times. When it really mattered to people what the planets were doing in the sky, uh, in that day, we're talking 2,000 years ago, Earth was believed to be in the center of all motion. We would later learn and confirm that the sun is in the center of that motion and not Earth. Yes. So what we see is Mercury going around the sun right in front of our eyes. But Mercury is always going forward. If you went to a car race and you're watching the car go around the track and it comes from left to right in front of you and then it goes right to left on the other side of the track, right. you don't invent a word for that. You don't say, oh, that car is now in retrograde. No, because the car is always moving forward. So you're saying there's no truth to that. This is just made it up is astrology. Complete bullshit. Yeah. It yeah. is left over from a time when people's egos were so large that they actually believed that a planet in the sky gave a rat's ass about <laughs> anything <laughs> in your life. I just want to so say important. that question was Jupiter. from Wiz Khalifa. That was not from me. <laughs> so a lot of you have asked me to speak on this clip. It ain't none. I got you. I'm not going to argue here or at all about the validity of Mercury retrograde because in many ways, him and I agree with the same thing. 99.9% .9 of what people say about Mercury retrograde is complete bullshit. Basura. So I'm not going to really prove that Mercury retrograde is a true thing or not. Like he said, science is science. You don't have to believe it. The sun is shining whether you believe it or not. But I will address the logic of his statement, which is filled with so much holes and fallacies. So, I mean, why not? There's actually so many. So let me think of where to start. Boom. Right off the bat, appeal to a false authority. Unfortunately, lack of education about astrology makes you feel that you can ask an astrophysicist a question about astrology. What? You wouldn't go to an auto body shop instead of an auto repair shop. They both work on cars, but they're subtly very different. In fact, the auto body shop won't be able to take care of your car if you need an auto repair. You see where I'm going with? So you guys really feel that asking <laughs> astrophysicists who have no experience reading natal charts or even believe in the validity of it is who you should ask about astrological questions. Well, there you go. It's important for me to establish this appeal to false authority because then it makes sense why his answer is really just a straw man. And I don't think he's doing it intentionally, but when you asked an astrophysicist a question that an astrologer is supposed to answer, it's probably why all he has are fallacy. Now the straw man is made of several red herrings, but let's just be clear really quick. There are people with no license in medicine who take care of patients and through negligence, kill those patients. But you wouldn't say medicine is complete bullshit, would you? You would. Oh, it gets better. You have people who actually, despite telescopes that exist, believe that the sun is in a firmament and the planet doesn't orbit around the sun. I know. It's you have people who believe that space isn't real. But you wouldn't say that astrophysics is fake because people who are not astrophysicists tell you false things about astrophysics. You wouldn't throw it away. So, on that vein, listening to people who are not experienced astrologers talk to you about Mercury retrograde and what they're saying isn't true doesn't necessarily mean that the science of it is complete bullshit. That's what brings me to the main straw man that he really built. If you listen to what he said, it's a persuasive definition of astrology. This is where this appeal to authority is important because if you're asking an astrophysicist who's never read a natal chart, they're not giving you an accurate definition of what this is. As you can see, a persuasive definition purports to describe the true or commonly accepted meaning of a term while in reality stipulating an uncommon or altered use, usually to support an argument for some view 
to create or alter rights, duties, or crimes. So when he tells you that astrology is based off of people 2,000 years ago who feel like the planets give a damn about them, like anyone who actually is experienced in reading natal charts knows that that's not at all what astrology is. That's not even a legitimate definition. And as such, these types of fallacies lead ways to hasty generalizations. So because most people don't respect authority, you're taking the word of someone who's never practiced astrology, giving you a hasty, generalized, persuasive definition of the craft. That's not what it is. And that alone is proof that based on these fallacies, that man cannot tell you that astrology is complete bullshit. He doesn't even know his moon sign. Are you serious? So I just proved to you right now that his argument isn't even sound. The only way you will believe that argument is you've never read a natal chart in your life. You have no experience actually practicing astrology. You right now cannot tell me the significance between the Earth's celestial equator and the sun's ecliptic path and what that means. Meaning information like this takes advantage of people who do not understand the necessary terms and the science behind any of this. And it's just easy for you to listen to someone who has no authority in this topic whatsoever. But what else is new? The truth doesn't need defense. So just like I was able to see these fallacies, everyone who actually knows will see them too. We don't need to defend astrology. You either know it or you will.